Hey, everybody. Welcome back to A Late Show. He is the New York Times bestselling author of Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. On Monday night, he will be hosting The Bachelor after the final rose. Please welcome back to A Late Show, Emmanuel Acho. Emmanuel, good to see you again. My brother, so good to see you, my friend. So good to see you. You're one, you're one of these uh, the few guests we've actually had twice in COVID. This is how long it's been going on. <laughs> The last time we were here, we, we were talking about uh, uncomfortable conversations with a black man and uncomfortable conversations in general. And, and, and while talking about systemic racism as, uh, as a white man can be uncomfortable, I don't mean to disappoint you, but you're actually very comfortable to talk to. I hope that doesn't seem, <laughs> seem like a failure to you. Oh, it's a catch-22. I lure you in by saying it'll be uncomfortable. But once you're here, Stephen, it's all comfort, my friend. <laughs> Well, let you this this summer you launched a web series to talk about a race in America. At that point, when we were talking this summer, did you, in your wildest dreams, think you'd be hosting The Bachelor the next time we talked? Absolutely not. That is the craziest of stories. That uncomfortable conversations with a black man, a book about racial reconciliation, will lead you, lead me to now hosting the most uncomfortable episode of one of the most watched shows in, like, our recent history. Mind-blowing. It is absolutely incredible. Um, okay, so the, let, let's, get, let's get to it. The Bachelor is always full of drama, obviously. Um, but this season was uh, particularly uh, uh, dramatic. There was controversy off-screen. For those who do not know, can, can you explain what happened and, and why people were so upset? Twofold. First and foremost, this season was the first black bachelor, Matt James. That's no small feat. 20 seasons, and we now have our first black bachelor, over 20 seasons, in fact. But then also, one of his final three um, frontrunners, Rachel Kirkconnell, she was pictured at a antebellum South plantation um, on social media in 2018, and those pictures resurfaced. She is a white woman, obviously. And so you have Matt James, a black man. One of his final front runners, Rachel, has these pictures surface, these racially insensitive pictures. Imagine how convoluted and volatile this topic is because you're dealing with love and you're also dealing with race and racial insensitivity. Okay. Um, and this is, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, these are like uh, a quote unquote old South days. So it's like it's people in hoop skirts. It's actually recreating the look. Uh, if not the yes, environment was, of, of, a, of an old South Plantation. Correct. Antebellum South Plantation is the proper term. But for those at home wondering, remember, antebellum in Latin means before the war, the war in question, the civil war that freed the slaves. So she is pictured in attire kind of celebrating, if you will, back in 2018, for which she has since apologized. But she is pictured in attire of old South Antebellum Plantation uh, a celebration, if you will. That's sure. at least how it looks. And, 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 you know, a celebration and also, at the very least, a willful ignorance about the tragedy associated with that, that entire culture. Um, okay, so there, there's the, the original scandal, or there's the original problem. Now let's talk about Chris Harrison. How did that come about for the people who, who don't know that story? What happened there that has now put you in the hosting position? Yeah, so Chris Harrison, who has been the host for 20 years and has recently stepped aside during this moment, he tried to go to the defense of Rachel Kirkconnell in an interview with Rachel Lindsay. And Chris Harrison, he, he was, as he would admit, was ignorant and was arrogant in saying that, well, in 2018, what Rachel Kirkconnell did wasn't that bad. Chris Harrison's word not words, not necessarily my own. And we've all kind of acknowledged and called to the attention no, no, no. In 2018, it was just as bad. We are more aware now, but 2018, acknowledging and dressing in the entire of an antebellum South plantation is just as bad as it is right now today. I think that I think that's safe to say. Those are his words, not yours. Um, <laughs> Very safe. <to> say. <laughs> um, okay, so here we are. So he steps aside uh, temporarily um, from those duties. Um, do you have an opinion about whether he should be dismissed for good for this, or is this an opportunity for uh, education and redemption for someone? Yeah, I don't believe in cancel culture. I do believe in accountability. 
And so I think that right now he is taking accountability for his actions. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That can be a law of Newton or that can just be basic common sense. He had an action and he is currently dealing with the reaction from that. Should he return to that role? You have to decide what's in the best interest of Chris Harrison. What's in the best interest of the show and the executive producers, but also what's in the best interest of the cast? You know, they're trying to commit to diversity. You had your first Black Bachelor. What's in the best interest of all three of those primary parties at play and make the decision that serves the most good? As you said, it was, it was, in, it was after 20 seasons, 23 seasons, something like that, before you had the first Black Bachelor and 13 seasons, I think, before you had the first Black Bachelorette. Yeah. Do you think that these, these shows should uh, more accurately reflect reality in America? You know, the reality that we all live of, uh, of, of, of a diverse culture of 20 drunk women living in one house trying to get one guy to marry them. You know, the reality of America. <laughs> oh, you are a fool, my friend. Um, I, I take that as a compliment. <laughs> but you... <laughs> You know, it, it is because the reason I ask is that I, I, diversity is a wonderful thing. Are these shows essentially fantasy to begin with? Are we putting too much weight on a reality show? So here is the issue at hand. This show, The, the Bachelor and The Bachelorette, they are supposed to be the utopian relationship in America. But if for 20 seasons all we see is a white male lead, if for 13 seasons all we see is a white female lead, then what is a utopian depiction of love in America? As me, as a black person, I'm looking at that show and saying, well, where do I fit in? Where do I belong? So I think we all have to commit both in shows like The Bachelor and The Bachelorette and in our society of more accurately representing the whole, more accurately serving everyone. But how do you do that? You don't just do it by who your lead character is, but who's casting who are your producers? Is there diversity across every board, my friend? Okay, let's talk about the the, the After the Rose show that you're hosting. Um, what I know you can't tell us who got picked or anything like that. I'm not trying to, like, squeeze that out of you, but is there it any... It sounds like you are. How, tell me about like the drama. Just give me a scale of the drama on a scale of 1 to 10. Where's the drama on this one? I can fervently say this will be the most uncomfortable conversation in Bachelor franchise history. Why? Because you have to understand. Because Emmanuel Acho is willing to have that uncomfortable conversation. <laughs> Look, though, no, Stephen, you got to understand, you're now mixing love, which is one of the strongest emotions, along with racial tension, which is one of the uh, most toxic and volatile topics of our current day. Like, you're mixing two incredibly strong and volatile subject matters and weaving them together in one final hour-long episode after the culmination of the show, it breeds discomfort, and I'm so thrilled to be a part of it and try to find the solution. I'll watch. I'll watch. Okay. <laughs> Have, uh, uh, just as a fan, I got to know, are you, a, are you a bachelor guy or a bachelorette guy? Because I, bachelor, quality show. Bachelorette, I really enjoy the like the twenty, you know, greased up meat slabs flexing on each other. <laughs> that's what I really love. I re that's my favorite. I I'm here for it. I'm gonna say I'm a bachelorette guy because I like seeing the men have to compete and seeing all their egos get involved. Sure, they get sensitive and all these macho men, you know, get their hearts broken and whatnot. I prefer it that way. Now you would make a great. Uh, bachelor on the Bachelorette competing with the other guys. Have you, have you, would you do the show? Dude, true story. True story. I've said it, but never this publicly. I was asked to do the show three times now. In 2018 for Becca Kufrin's season, then later in 2018 for what would have been Hannah Brown season, and then at the beginning of 2020, um, I was again poached about doing the show, and uh, I, I turned it down all three times, and Look why? You, why? You would have been a, 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 an audience favorite. <laughs> I'd like to keep my public life public and my private life private. All right. Okay. So um, one other thing you're not going to tell me about is you're not going to tell me who got picked. And I won't even say who you would pick between the two finalists, which are uh, Rachel and Michelle, 
But do you have an opinion? Do you have a choice in your mind if you had to pick? It, it, I mean, it's, it's interesting, right? Rachel is currently dealing with all of this racially tense controversy. Mm -hmm. um, so that would kind of obviously skew my decision as a black man if I already knew about uh, said controversy. But I, I think what's so interesting is watching both of the love connections play out. I think Matt and Rachel have an incredible connection, just affection. Matt admitted that he was falling for Rachel first. And then Michelle and Matt, they really vibe. And we saw it, um, and we've continued to see it over the course of the season. So I can't speak for Michelle, for, for Matt, rather. Uh, but I'm excited to watch it play out. Me too. And I'm also excited about your new book, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a follow-up to Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man, and it's Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Boy. Um, who's this book for? Stephen, when I was an adolescent, I always heard, Emmanuel, you're like an Oreo. White on the inside, black on the outside. I didn't realize how offensive that was, because my white friends, when I was young, were saying, well, Emmanuel, you're too smart to be black, or you dress too well to be black. I had an identity complex. So this book is for our young adults. Think ages uh, 12 to 16, 10 to 14, because if we can fix the next generation of ignorance, if we can fix the next generation of insensitivity, then we can cure the problem at the root. Don't try to correct the leaves. Don't try to cut down the branches. Fix the root of our racial ignorance in our society and then watch what sprouts from there. Emmanuel, thanks so much for being here. My pleasure, my friend. The Bachelor After the Final Rose airs on this Monday on ABC. Emmanuel Acho, everybody. We'll be right back with comedian Gina Yashere.